What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of All the Mods Expert. Oh, yeah, guys. So last episode, we were deciding that we need to get power. And it looks like water wheels are going to be probably the best early game power supply that I could see. There might be something else, but that was the only one that caught my attention, right? And I was like, you know, those are going to be pretty easy to do. Uh, we can use the power to power these different machines over here. Yeah, all of our different rock counting ones. And yeah, we'll be able to knock it out. But then I got to looking at this. We look at the water wheel, this thing here, the segment. It is used to craft these water wheels, but in order to do this, it does require steel. Now, we got a bunch of different types of steel in this mod pack. The ones that we care about, or I guess the one that we care about, is the Industrial Craft 2 version. Pretty much the only way I can see that we can make that stuff at this point is through a blast furnace. Okay, so we've already made the coke oven. The blast furnace is the counterpart to that as the other machine is almost exactly the same from immersive engineering. So the blast furnace, let's take a look at this. It is comprised of 27 blast bricks, I do believe. And one blast brick requires bronze, coal, coke, and purple. Okay, so coal coke. Let's start here. Coal coke is made by putting coal through our coke oven, or I guess uh, anthracite coal, more specifically, through the coke oven, and then we get coal coke. I do believe it gives you, yeah, uh, one-tenth of a bucket of creosote oil. So 10 of those will equal a bucket. All right, so we need a decent amount of that coal. Uh, we also need a place to store our creosote oil. I was looking over here. This tank is full and the internal tank from doing all these different pieces of wood into charcoal is as full as it can get right now. It's stopped working because it has no place to put the extra creosote. Right. So <laughs> we need a way to increase the amount of storage capacity for that or just delete all the creosote. I don't think deleting it is going to be the best option. Can I put that log away? No, I guess we're full up on everything right now. My goodness. Okay, so you'll notice our chest here full of different materials is kind of full. Uh, I've been doing some mining here. I got tired of needing something and being like, oh, we got to go mine forward. So I made a mine here on level, what is this, level 55. Um, I was trying to find, what was I trying to find at this level? Was it that coal? Maybe it was that coal. I don't know. Uh, but I was here and I mined out a whole lot of stuff. Our hammer dinged. I put another thing of haste on there. So now we got haste ist -er. Yeah, anyway. Uh, I think it's plus 60 or plus 80% speed increase. Uh, I was doing some more mining down here. Was it this level? Yeah, I did a little bit on this level where another portal is. You can see it opened this up a bit. And I think I did some more down here on what is this y30 did i do any more below this i don't remember i was doing a lot of resource collecting yeah i might have done some down here uh i was doing a lot of resource collecting and yeah we dinged our hammer we got some resources ready to go i did end up finding a spawner i don't remember where that's connected maybe it's the next one down let's take a look at this real quick uh yeah it might have been over here there was a spawner that I found, and I don't remember which mod it's from. It's not a vanilla spawner. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. It's up this waterfall. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's Abyssal Craft. Is that the, the mod? Anyway, it spawns these weird-looking things that didn't seem hostile. Uh, this is a monster spawner. I don't remember what these things are called. I guess we could knock out some of these torches. Uh, potentially, I could make this safer so they can't escape they're pretty tall monsters i think they're three blocks tall or something let's go and fill that back in yeah that should be good so if i knock out some of these torches we should get some of these guys to spawn maybe yeah these guys anti-ghoul no idea what they are they look very weird uh oh no i guess they are hostile when i was here before they didn't seem to want to attack me or maybe they just couldn't get out of their cage i don't know what the deal was with them uh, let me go and eat some of these so we can get our health <laughs> regening. Alright, that should be good enough. Yeah, so these guys just keep spawning. Uh, they were dropping things like chain armor. I don't know if that's the only thing they drop. I didn't sit here and try to farm them at all. 
Let's see, what did we just get there? We got anti-plagued flesh on a bone. Seems delicious. All right, there's another one. But yeah, these guys seem like they're dropping chain armor uh, when I killed them before. Did the guy just spawn and disappear? I don't know what that was. That was weird. <laughs> anyway, we'll put these torches back, prevent them from spawning. Uh, we got beetroot seeds in here. We got some iridium shards. Uh, melon seeds. I don't think we had melons at all before. Gold horse armor, a name tag, and some string. I believe we will need these iridium shards for when we get into IC2, but for right now, I'm just going to leave all that stuff down here. I didn't want to show you guys this thing, though. I've never seen these mobs before, so... Anyway, thought that was kind of interesting. So yeah, let's go ahead and move on. Uh, so one of the reasons why I was down here mining a lot was trying to get the magnetite. Yeah, this stuff right here. That uh, turns into a little over an ingot's worth of iron when you smelt it down using the ember stuff. So we should have a lot of iron now. I can't remember if I got it all out of this thing. I think I put a whole bunch in here and then left. We got in there? We got another stack. Oop. Let me grab the stack of iron out of there. Uh, that tank looks like that is empty. We might still have some more in here somewhere. No, I guess maybe it's all done now. Hmm. Anyway, we got another stack of iron ready to go, which is pretty awesome. I think I'd brought some more up here as well. Yeah, so we got almost two stacks of iron now. So that's really nice. I do believe we got some more iron burying minerals in here. So yeah, we should be able to get some of that going. Oh, it was bauxite ore, right? Bauxite is the reason why I made this mine on this level here to get that. It said, I think Y60 was about the best, but 55 is where I started mining on it. Anyway. Uh, so now we got a lot of resources ready to go. <laughs> we should be able to start making some progress on here. But yeah, uh, coal coke and the creosote oil. I was thinking we should probably make ourselves a drum. So we can use some of the iron that we got to make this drum. And then I looked at the cauldron. The cauldron <laughs> requires aluminum plates. That's why I went to go farm aluminum. Yeah. Anyway, so we need, was it seven aluminum plates? seven of them so we should have enough aluminum here bauxite and i do believe we have the plate cast out here by our smeltery yeah we certainly do so we can go and put that here melt down our bauxite which usually melts pretty quickly in the smeltery yep that's not so bad i'll go ahead and pour these out we should be able to make our cauldron swap things over or at least add in that drum we could just add the drum right on top of our tank here and have it push into the drum. That way we don't have to worry about having any type of a fluid pipe or extraction pipe or anything like that. I think it'll make things simpler. We can just add it directly onto what we have already. Anyway, let me finish this up. We'll make the drum and then we will look at moving on. So I just got done making the iron drum. This is what we want, but I saw there was a stone drum here. I don't remember if I've ever looked at a stone drum before. I was trying to figure out how much fluid this stores, but, you know, pressing shift on this and looking at the tooltips doesn't really say. So let's make a stone drum real quick, just so we know how much this holds. Maybe it's better than making these iron drums. Uh, it doesn't actually say anywhere how much this holds. Interesting. Can I put, like, a bucket of water in there? And will it tell me? I don't know. <laughs> I would like to know how much this thing holds. Okay, so, oh, there it is. One out of 16 buckets. All right, so it doesn't hold that much. I need a regular pickaxe to get rid of this now, don't I? Otherwise, I'm going to ruin everything. It doesn't hold that much, but it's rather inexpensive, too. So, I don't know. That might be something we use in the future. But right now, since it's so inexpensive and we're kind of low on space, I'm just going to throw it away. Uh, so, our iron drum, we should be able to take out here. Just set it right on top of our current thing, or we could set next to it, whichever. Maybe we'll set it right like that. Uh, we can do the configuration option on this and push the fluid from the tank into here. So it's pulling the fluid out of our creosote. I'm sorry, it's pulling the creosote out of our Coke oven into itself and then pushing the fluid from itself into the drum right here. So yeah, we have a large amount of fluid storage now, 256 buckets of fluid storage, in fact. So yeah, that's going to work really well. Now we can kind of look at setting up some kind of automation to get the amount of coal coke that we need made. 
Uh, so we should have a lot of this stuff as well. Yeah. So we need 27 blocks of coal coke. I actually don't know if four of these is enough. I guess what we could do, instead of trying to math it out, we could do one of these numbers. So one stack is seven. Three stacks is going to be 21. So add in another one, that's 28. So that'll be one more than what we need. That's perfect. Okay. So we have exactly enough here. Uh, so we can go ahead and take all of these things and smelt that down. In fact, I think if we get rid of one from each of these, we should have the correct amount when they're all processed through. So we need some kind of way to push the coal into here, into this and a way to pull it back out. Uh, I guess a hopper underneath it would probably work. Can, do we have a hopper? Do we have any item extraction pipes? Weren't those item pipes that we had these? Don't those work for items? Hmm. So the uses on those, what can we craft these into? Item pump from embers. Yeah, I think we might need to do one of these so we can pump items out of it and then we could use a hopper to push items in. Or we could just make a chest and pump it in from both ways. Uh, either way, I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, what are the recipes for these? So that is lead nuggets plus the Kamenite brick. Right. Right. I don't think we have extra of that stuff. We have two of those. Hmm. I was thinking that might be easier. It might be easier <laughs> just to uh, make a couple of hoppers. Well, I tell you what, I'm going to have to do some crafting here. Let me just craft things up and try and get things set up. And we will automate this in such a way where we can make all the coal coke that we need. And we'll be right back. All right, guys, so we got just a very, very simple automation happening here. We got a hopper that's feeding in the coal to the top, which is being processed through the Coke oven. Uh, and then the resulting coal Coke is being extracted from the bottom with a hopper and put into a chest right here. So yes, we are getting our coal Coke here. Very simple. I went ahead and I claimed all the chunks in the base just now, and then I loaded these chunks here around what we're doing. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> where this is positioned is between two chunks, and I figured I might as well load the chunks inside our uh, our base over here as well. Anyway, uh, so we got all of that going. So this will just happen over time. So the next things we got to worry about is getting the purper block. That's going to be the next difficult thing here, right? Uh, bronze, we can just go ahead and make purper. Yeah, that's the thing. So in order to get purper, we do have to go to the end. We have to get chorus fruit, right? So in order to get chorus fruit, we have to go to the end, which means we need to find the end portal, which means we need ender pearls. Yeah. So I was kind of looking what we need to do for ender pearl. Of course, endermen dropped them, but I was looking if there was any other way to get these things. Now, if we can get the nebulous hearts from the endermen, that's an additional three pearls. So that'll speed things up a little bit. I, I don't think you can get these blocks of ender pearls in, in the world anywhere. I don't think you can mine for those. So yes, we need to go find ourselves some Endermen so we can murder their faces and collect the Ender Pearls. Okay, uh, where was, oh, this one right here, Mob Drops, yeah. So uh, zero to one for Ender Pearls, and then we got a 10% chance if it's killed by a player affected by looting for the Nebulous Heart. So yes, looting is probably a thing that we should look at. We have not put looting on our sword yet. Uh, our sword does have four modifiers, so we could increase the attack damage that it produces a lot more as well. But yeah, so we need to get ourselves lapis. Now we had lapis, and we used a bit of this uh, to make some of the things for the rock counting over there. I guess the sulfur, the sulfuric acid. Anyway, uh, now we need the lapis for other things. <laughs> uh, so if we go here, lapis we look at the ore, we can see on this tab, it shows where the best generation for that will be. And that is at diamond level, Y12, right? So we happen to have a branch mine, or I guess uh, just a pit uh, down here on Y12. That's our diamond level. Yep, I think it is time for us to do a bit more mining. I think I might have found some lapis that I never mined in here. I'll have to go through and look and see if there's any exposed ores or whatever. But pretty much what I need to do is just continue going through here, digging out all the rock ah, if I, as if I haven't done enough of that <laughs> uh, just recently. Anyway, I'll probably cover all of this lava up 
Yeah, and then we can mine out this over here instead of going around it. That'll just make it simpler, and then we don't have to worry about falling into it or any of that stuff. But anyway, I got a lot of mining ahead of me. I want to collect enough lapis in order to get ourselves fortune three, or I guess looting three. I think that's like 320 pieces. We do have fortune three on our hammer here, so when we break each piece of lapis, we should get like, I don't know, 20 to 40 pieces. I can't remember how much it is, but it seems like you get a ridiculous amount of lapis per ore with fortune three. Anyway, uh, I'm going to start digging and we'll be back. All right, guys. So after a lot of mining, this is the amount of lapis we ended up with. Not a whole lot, but I think it might be enough to get us to our fortune three. Let's figure that out. Uh, I'm sorry, looting three. Keep saying the same. They keep saying the wrong thing. So one of those is 60. There we go. So there is one modifier. So we can do that. That'll get us up to 180 right here. Oop. We might not have enough. Pretty close. Pretty close. We need about 14 more. No. 24 more. Yes, I can math. No, I'm still wrong. 18 more. <laughs> uh, anyway, so there is that. So we have looting two. We are almost there. Just a little bit more lapis. I could go and smack some monsters around. I think this gains looting similar to like the hammer does when you mine stuff out. Hmm. I, you know, I was really thinking we were there, but I guess I was just a few lapis shy. Tell you what, let's go mine the rest of those. We'll get that all the way up to fortune three. And then we'll look at trying to farm some ender pearls. All right, guys. So we got uh, looting three. I was about to say fortune again. We got looting three on our sword now. The next thing to do is to start looking at endermen. So now we are able to be outside at nighttime. Whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> yeah, we're able to be outside at nighttime because our area is all lit up and we have a fence around. There we go. There's two pearls plus an additional three more. So that's really awesome. That's just with one enderman. Uh, I just kind of got to go around our fence here, see if we can spot any more Endermen on the outskirts, see if we can look at them and draw them inside our base where we will murder their faces and collect their Ender Balls. That's right. <laughs> uh, yeah, spiders can still get over the fence if they choose to, but that's not that big of a deal. I don't really care about that. Uh, yeah, the only thing I am interested in right now is collecting more Ender Pearls or Ender Balls, whatever you want to call them. Uh, so this is how I'm going to spend the next... Well, I guess what 10 minutes of my day is Minecraft night looking for Endermen trying to get their pearls. Well, let me keep at it and we'll be back guys. So I was hearing an Enderman. I was like, where is it? Yeah. Enderminis. I forgot about these. Come here, little guy. Did these guys pack a punch? I don't know. It doesn't look like they can get to me and I don't think it dropped a pearl. Oh, well, that's too bad. Yeah. I forgot the Enderminis are in here from Ender Zoo. So that's another source of pearls that we can get. Yeah, okay, so I have to keep that in mind. You know, I've been going around <laughs> our area here for a little while now. I found that one Enderman, and then I saw there was another one underground. I guess there's a cave over here. And I wonder if all of these circles, the little red circles, without an icon are the Enderminis. I don't know. But anyway, uh, yeah, there was like an Enderman underground here, and I was like, you know, I don't really want to dig underground for him. Uh... Yeah, I saw the icon. Is this another? No, that's these creepers. Ah, that's the other ones. Are these the guys that keep exploding around? Maybe they are. <laughs> I don't know. Oh my goodness. Okay, well, the hunt continues for more pearls. Well, I ended up finding two Endermen here underground. I just killed one of them. I didn't realize there was two of them there. Yeah, it looks like two of them spawned right here in this little three tall gap. Weird. Okay, so now we're up to six. Pearls, well, I guess uh, nine pearls with these here. So we'll go ahead and do that. So nine pearls in one night, that's not so bad. Yeah, it did end up going underground. I really wasn't wanting to do that, but I saw the Enderman. I see more Enderman over here. Oh my goodness. Okay, well, we're going to go for these ones too. Uh, since we're not really having much luck above ground right now. Yeah, we're just going to dig our way over here, try and get these guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the silliest way to try and get Enderman, but you know what? You gotta do what you gotta do, right? So where are you? This way? Maybe down lower? I'm not sure. Let's look at the map. Uh, You know, that's gotta be down low. 
Let's try digging down a little bit. Maybe we'll get into a cave. I can hear it. Gotta keep pl placing torches down so we can see what we're doing. All right. Oops, skeleton. All right. Oh. This guy doesn't like me. <laughs> okay, we're fine. We're fine. Let's see where the skeleton. Okay, so we were at nine pearls and now we're at 13. All right, well, we're doing work here. We're getting ender pearls done, but yeah. Ah, it's kind of like not the easiest thing in the world to go about it this way. Uh, ruining the world, digging down <laughs> in all these different ways. But we're getting these pearls one way or another. Uh, I think we need something. Hmm. We need at least a minimum of 12. Or I guess a maximum of 12 to fill out the end portal itself. And then we're going to need additional pearls to throw. Or I guess eyes of ender to throw to try and find the portal itself. Yeah. So probably around 20 pearls, I'd say would be a safe estimate for what we're trying to do here. Anyway, I'm going to light up all this cave and stuff that I just <laughs> dug through, make sure nothing else is going to spawn down here. Uh, and yeah, probably just going to wait for the next nighttime and try and get some more pearls that way. Anyway, I'll be back. All right, guys, so we did a pretty good job here of collecting our ender pearls. We now have 24 of these pearls ready to go. So I think that's going to be enough. So we can take our blaze rods that we've collected from the nether and turn that into a little bit of blaze powder. And we can make eyes of ender out of those. Now, I think those stack to 64 or whatever. So, yeah, they won't take up multiple inventory slots. Uh, so we can put that in there for more fuel. Now, I'm cooking up a little bit of stone here. Yeah, I'm kind of interested in getting repair on our sword. I'm noticing that it is not repairing very quickly. Now, it does have ecological from the wooden handle that we put on there. So it will regenerate a little bit of durability over time. But just in those last couple of nights of just fighting Endermen, pretty much. Yeah, we've already lost that much durability. Now, if we're going to use a sword for smacking the Ender Dragon down, we're going to want to make sure that we get our durability back. So I'm thinking we're going to make ourselves a chisel. And we are going to make ourselves some moss out of stone. So here's a chisel. Here's some stone. Actually, I need one more. There we go. Uh, do this. Right click on this guy. We put the stone in there. And there we go. Mossy stone bricks. So this is kind of like an exploit. Kind of. You can take cobblestone or you can take smooth stone and put it with vines in order to get mossy stone. Or you can use a chisel to do it with regular stone like this to get the ball of moss. But either way, there gives us a couple of balls of moss here. So I think we want to take uh, our sword and put moss on there. Can we not do this? Uh, oh, do we have to do the thing where we click it on the, the thing and do the stuff? Hmm. All right. So if I do this, click it on a bookshelf, it gives it mending. Okay. So maybe we have to do mending. We can't just do the repair. I keep forgetting how this works in the 1.10 versions. Okay, so here we go. Uh, we can put mending moss in there. I think you can probably do two of those. And it goes faster? Hmm, I can't remember. But anyway, this will repair over time with XP. Can I do another one? So you shift right click onto a bookshelf. And it uses some of your experience to make the mending moss. Anyway... Uh, let's do, if we put two on there, do we get mending moss too? Oh yeah. Okay. You do. So I don't know if that stores more XP or if that just repairs faster. That does require a modifier by putting the tier two one on there. I think we're fine. I think we can do that. I'm not worried about that at all. Uh, another thing we can do, we've been getting these a solidified experience. So if we shift right click on these, it uses all of that. Um, but you know what? I think I had to be holding that in my off hand. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, does that even... Yeah, that doesn't work. Okay, so let's hit F on the sword. Put it in my offhand. We'll do that with the other bit of our solidified experience here. And hopefully some of that experience will go towards the sword for mending it. Let's put that... Oh, it's in my offhand. I can't see it in that screen. So we go here, go here, do one of these. Yeah, so now we have experience on the sword, and that's going to slowly repair it over time. That should work just fine for me. I'm fine with that. Uh, yeah, and as we kill things with the sword, it should collect the experience for mending like that. And yeah, it should always keep itself repaired. I think that's what we're going to do. Well, I mean, can't really go back now, so that's what we're doing. <laughs> Uh, we'll put that chisel away. I have been cooking up a little bit of bread here. We've been running low on food on our toast. We have plenty of these berries. Every time I need more berries, I can just come out here and harvest, you know, a lot of those so we can replenish our spice of life uh, needs that <laughs> we have to deal with. Um, but yeah, our bread, that's what fills up all of our saturation, a good portion of our hunger too. Yeah, so... Want to make sure we have plenty, or I'm sorry, not our bread, the toast. I want to make sure we have plenty of that for when we need food in the future. So yeah, cooking up a little bit more bread into toast here so we can take care of those needs as well. Okay, so we can put that away and we can put the stone away. Well, I might take a few stacks of stone with me. We need to go to uh, find a fortress, or not a fortress, a stronghold is our next goal. We still don't have ourselves a sleeping bag. Is that a thing that we can do? Let's take a look at that. We looked at this a while ago. But it's been a minute since I looked at it, and we might be able to do this now. So we need silky cloth, which required enriched gold, which required gold plus obsidian dust. I don't remember if we have extra obsidian mined. Oh, it looks like we do. So how many pieces of obsidian do we need? If we do this... Okay, so it looks like we're going to need 16 obsidian mined. Uh, we're going to need a bed, and then we're going to need this net, which is woven stuff. Okay, well, I think I'll make myself a sleeping bag. We got plenty of obsidian down here that I can mine up. We'll crush it with this thing. We'll make ourselves a sleeping bag. That way, we can go look for the stronghold. Yeah, and then sleep as needed without having to worry about it being nighttime. I think that's the, the best thing. Also, I believe the sleeping bag does not reset your home point. It only progresses the nighttime. So yeah, we don't have to worry about sending our home point way far away either. Anyway, let me get to this and we'll be back guys. All right guys, so we got two blocks of gold. I was just when I farmed up a bunch of obsidian from down below. So now we should be able to get this going. So we needed 16 obsidian, or I'm sorry, 16 more gold. And then we need our calculator, wherever that is right here. This still has a little bit of energy left, 43 RF. I think we're going to be using up a decent amount of that to make this stuff. <laughs> so we are down to 27. We have no way to recharge this. So if ever we do run out, we're just going to have to make a new one, which I don't think it's that big of a deal. We made this pretty early on, so it should be relatively inexpensive just to make a new one. But there's our enriched gold. So back to our bed recipe. We need wool. Looks like we're going to need a decent amount of this stuff. Uh, string, I'll make some more wool out of this. All right, so we needed four of these. There's four of that. And then we're gonna need some additional string to make the woven cloth, I do believe. Thankfully, we have all of the flax here, so it's not that big of a deal. Oh, am I placing string down? Oh, I'm placing string down. Oh, that's gonna be annoying to break this without breaking our flax plants. Whoops, I just trolled myself with string. <laughs> okay, yeah, so word of advice, don't right click on flax while you're holding string. Otherwise, you're gonna have a bad time. <laughs> Oops. Okay, I think this might be enough right here. We're gonna need a lot of string per harvest of the flax plant. Uh, how much do I have? A little over a stack? Is that enough? That, that might be enough. Grab that. All right, so let's see if we can make the woven cloth that we need. So back to this guy, this guy, this. We need eight of these. Oh, we got plenty here. All right, so there's that. So we should be able to make our net, and then we need a bed as well. Uh, I don't remember the recipe for a bed. Is that... So that's wool plus creosote blocks. Didn't we already make another bed? I feel like we had made a white bed before. Maybe we did not. 
anyway, uh, if we have creosote treated wood planks, is that, <laughs> I don't know what we're looking for as far as creosote wood goes. Um, I guess we go back in here. Let's click on, I can't click on any of these beds because they're not actually there for whatever reason. So we'll click on this one, creosote wood block. So that is wood plus a bucket of creosote oil. It's been a minute since we made one of those. I could not remember what the recipe was, but we can easily come out here and just make a few of those. I'll just put a spot for my water. Okay. So there is creosote plus this. Yeah, we just got to do that uh, three more times, or I guess two more times here. Need a total of three of those. All right, that, that, this. Nice. And grab that back. Fill in the divot. All right, so we should be able to make our bed, and then we should be able to make our sleeping bag. Oh, my goodness. What a pain to make all this stuff. Yeah, I guess we're going to be making a white bed. Hopefully, that'll work just fine. So there is that. So there's a bed. There's the net. There's four of those. There's our sleeping bag. So now we should be able to sleep wherever we want to without being tied down to having to have a bed on us and place it down and set our spawn point. Nice. I like it. Okay. So that is a huge step forward as well. That's another tool to keep in our <laughs> white bag tier three here so we can make some progress. All right. So now we got plenty of string. I can put that up and then we got a lot of these flax seeds. I don't know if we need to plant any more flax around. We have a decent amount of this stuff and it's always growing. I should probably make sure this is chunk looted over here as well, I would think. All right, so I think we're pretty much ready to go to start looking for a stronghold. Well, guys, I was kind of hoping we'd be able to get to a stronghold today, but I just looked at the time on this episode. My goodness, time flies when you're having fun, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, we ran out of time for today, so we'll have to look for the stronghold next episode, which will allow us to find the stronghold and probably go to the end, take on the dragon, and do all these kinds of things. Hopefully, we'll get that purple blocks that we're looking for and be able to progress and get ourselves that blast furnace. But anyway, that's going to do it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.